Okay, let's see if anybody actually tunes in and watches this. I'm um, not sure how the quality is or anything like that. Um, but we are live. <clears throat> okay, so um, I just got this in. I picked it up used. This is Spider-Go Dragonfly. going to do the unboxing of it and just kind of ramble for a little while. Oh, hey, two people are tuned in. Sweet. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to activate comments on this. Um, let me just a second. Oh, only one person. Somebody left. That's a shame. Let's see. Let me just... Oh, that's weird. That is weird. Okay. I can see chat now. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and open this up. <clears throat> go ahead and use my little Kershaw watch to cut into this. It's kind of an unorthodox angle to open something for me, so I apologize. Oh, come on. You guys are in for a treat, too, because I'm probably going to end up disassembling and cleaning this because it is used. Oh, that's just adorable. That is just the tiniest little... Let me get this out of the way so the exposure is a little better. Three people. Oh, wow. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, Spider-Co Dragonfly. This is the orange because I love the color orange. Oh, that's just adorable. Look at it. Pretty good action, actually. Um, still probably going to take it apart, but it's nice. Um, if you're wondering for size reference, um, Dragonfly Kershaw Launch 4 ZT0450CF. So really, really tiny knife. Really like this orange. Um, I don't have my sailor here, as you can see. It looks like it's a very similar shade. Kind of super bright. Super vibrant orange. Spedico wire clip. This is the FRN version. Um, kind of wish I'd gotten the G10, but I got this thing for like $35 or something like that. Couldn't really resist. Let's go ahead and uh, take it apart, and we'll go from there. Let's see. T8 and T6, I believe. That one person who's watching, you are a trooper. Thank you. Really surprised. I don't know if these things are giving out notifications or something. Um, feel free to enter some stuff into chat, and you can kind of talk with me here if you want to. I think I can see it. Okay, so we got a T6 and T8. Let's go ahead and uh, do the pivot first. I do have some knife cleaning supplies off here to the side. Um, let's see. It is not free spinning, which is good. That came out really, really easy. Hopefully the rest of it goes that smoothly. Yeah, there we go. Kind of move those off to the side and try our very best not to lose them. Um, okay, so we'll push that out in just a moment. Switch over to... Is that even a screw? Okay, yeah. These T6s are really, really shallow. There we go. You know, I really hate that all of the back locks that I disassembled. So I don't know why the hell I'm doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. Let's see. And... I probably have to remove the clip screw. I'm going to try it. These wire clip screws are a pain in the butt, too. Yep, there we go. Okay. So it's... Is it like a Chicago screw on both sides? Yep, sure enough. Okay, put that over there. Put that over there. And let's try to push this pivot out. That wasn't too bad. Oh. Okay. Oh, gosh. Let's see. This is not going well so far, in my opinion. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't hurt myself. Yeah, so the, um, <clears throat> this is the FRN version, as I mentioned. It's a little bit cheaper. Oh, thank God I didn't lose that. It's a little bit cheaper, but, um, much more difficult to disassemble. And 
don't know if that's going to come apart. I don't think so. No, 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 push my luck. And you can, um, it's a bit more difficult to get custom scales for it. <clears throat> Let's see. So the blade does appear to be pretty clean. Um, I didn't see any washers. I'm wondering. Okay, so yeah, there, there they are. Um, I don't know how well. Oh, never mind. There are no washers. What the hell? It's, it's literally just running on, like, plastic. Um, okay. Okay. Action was still pretty good, to be honest. That's that's surprising. Um, let's go ahead and clean it up and uh, see if we can get it back together in one piece. Putting together a back lock is a hell of a lot harder. Shut up, Josh. Is a hell of a lot harder than um, <clears throat> taking one apart. Let's see, we got some alcohol here. And some Q-tips, which are really, 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 really helpful for getting in these small spaces. Like inside of a knife. Go and try to get all this gunk off. So it was a little bit more dirty than I thought, but not too bad. Oh, this is going to be fun. I believe these Q tips, at least at first glance, are too wide to fit inside the scales of this. But we'll see. I could probably wedge it in there. I've fit in tighter spaces before. Oh, wow, that's gross. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so there's not really much to cleaning this knife. Um, this texture on this FRN handle is just ugly as sin. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can put it back together. And uh, I'll try not to injure myself here. So I just left the bag bar pin in. Um, just because it is a pain in the butt to try to get it out. So we'll try to push down the back bar here just enough to get the, yes, Josh, this is a brand new one. Um, I just got this in today, picked it up off of Reddit for a very good price. Thank you. I also like the orange. Um, which, which, which one was, I believe this was the, the pen. <clears throat> orange is very pretty. Yes, it is. Urgh. Let's see. First, let's try to get this little collar in. Which we not only have to get through the FRN scale, but also is D shaped, which is no no jokes there, Josh. No no D jokes on that one. Um, there we go. Okay, so that's in. And you'll notice it's still sticking out. That's because we have to insert the blade. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> tighten this down just enough to where it won't slip out because that would be disastrous. Uh, yep, still got T6 on there, perfect. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is a little out of your, uh, your normal comfort zone there, Josh. If you'd watch my other videos, you would you would know what all of this is. I have a Knife 101. It is terrible because it's an older video, but it does exist. If you are curious. Okay, so the color of, the color for the pivot's also D-shaped. This is a tiny little pivot. Video redos. Um, <clears throat> maybe if I got enough demand on one, I would probably redo a video. There we go. Hell yeah. You know, this is why I don't, this is why I haven't gone live before. But yeah, this whole knife completely forgot to put any sort of lubricant on it. Ha ha. Um, <clears throat> luckily I have the pen applicator for the nano oil. So let's see. I mean, it's, it's running against plastic. It can't get that bad. Let me go ahead and try to put... I'll try to spread open the uh, scales just a little here. Try to get some nano oil down in there. Also, with it being a backlock, I'll show you in just a moment. But you can put some on the back and it'll help out a bit. Yes, you do. You, you never want to try to push this in dry.
if any of the other two people on here want to start talking, so Josh will quit it with the jokes, feel free. See, again, this is why I don't do live videos. Completely forgot this little pivot collar thing. Whatever in the hell that is. There we go. That looks dirty. Let me see if I can flip it over to the clean side. Yep, that's the clean side. Boom. I apologize if you took that as mean. I didn't mean it as mean. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's screw the pivot back on here. And I'll go ahead now and tighten down the screw on the lock bar. This is going a hundred times smoother than I thought it would. Have any of you guys seen the uh, Twisby Go this morning? Woke up and that's like the first thing I saw on Instagram. Instagram, not Instagram. Instagram. No, it's the first thing I saw on Instagram this morning, and um, I was really surprised, honestly. Um, so it's a little pen from Twisby, but instead of using a piston mechanism, which all of their pens have used up to this point, except if you know anything about Twisby, the Twisby Micarta, which I super duper want and super duper cannot afford, um, that is the only one that has not used a piston mechanism. It used cartridge converter. So this uses kind of like a weird spring mechanism. It's very bizarre but very, very cool. I like it quite a bit so far, the way it's looking. Um, my wife has requested multiples of them, so that means we're going to be getting at least one. I really hope they only release one color, because that means just one. If they do release multiple colors, we'll have to get them. My problem with it is, um, just from first glance, it looks very poorly made. Like, um, like the Eco is cheap, but it's very well made. Oh my gosh. That's why I hate Spyderco wire clips. They're not inherently bad, but getting them back is a pain. Yes, multiples generally means at least one when it comes to pens for me. You know, I've been really meaning to pick up the Twisby Precision Fountain Pen, but I just... I only have so much money. And it's not a lot. At least two. Uh, if they release more than one color, yeah, at least two. Okay. So I was just tightening the screws on all the way. I just want to show you here. The pivot is so tight that I literally cannot move the blade even after unlocking it. Don't do not do what I just did there and put your hand in front of the blade while trying to demonstrate how difficult it is to close. Okay, so we're getting some movement now. Loosen that up just a bit more. Let's see. I'm going to guess about here will be good. That's still a little stiff. Yeah, it, so it is a spring. Um, at least that's what it looks like to me. Um, it looks like the back unscrews. The pin is huge. Uh, I don't know. It would depend on who's holding it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it looks like the back unscrews and... And um, the the spring kind of is there. I was wondering how they did that. Rewatch the video, and that's how. Um, so the action on this thing now is atrocious. I'm actually wondering if there were washers, and I lost them somewhere. But I just I didn't see any. Um, give me just a moment. Oh hey, more people. Okay, I have. Um, I will I'll have to check out that, that particular mark in the video there, Josh. Maybe I just have it too tight still. Let me see. There we go. So yeah, there 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 weren't washers, it just See that's pretty good. The ergonomics on this thing are crazy good. Um I'm getting a hot spot off the clip here. It's really, really high. Ergonomically, it's it's nowhere near as good as like um, the Cinto Vante three here, which this is a much much larger knife. But in the hand, oh wow, it's a really good one. Um, I hate a lot of stuff about that knife though, but you know, 
Dragonfly, though, looking pretty good so far. So, um, since this is a back lock, the tang of the blade meets this lock right back here, so you can kind of drop down some lubricant in there, and kind of along the tang of the blade, and that'll help out the action a lot. A whole lot. Oh, it's so much smoother now. There we go. Not bad. So I actually have four spider coat knives. Um, one of them's a bird. You can kind of count that. All of them are back locks. I hate back locks. I don't know how I keep buying them. Oh, because their designs are so good. But yeah, that was about it there. Um, I don't think I have anything else to take apart or break or damage and then regret breaking it. At least for the time being. I'm actually pretty excited. I'm going to try to get the um, Sailor 1911 Large video out this weekend. Um, I didn't pull any out. Oh, any of the washers, you mean? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any. It was just a concern of mine. Really paranoid. It's so strange to me this doesn't have any washers do a pen. Like disassemble a pen, you mean? Is that what you're talking about? Just to disassemble one? Um, okay, let's, I have the Lamy Safari right here. Boom. Look at that. I'm actually doing a pen maintenance video I'm working on. Um, hopefully that'll be out this weekend of, of kind of cleaning and maintaining and taking care of your tools. So that's one part of the Safari. Boom. That's two. Three. This is going to get messy. This is not the petrol. This is the charcoal. That's it. Oh, hold on. I did. The most commonly um, forgotten part of the Lamy Safari is this little ring here, which can pop off, in case you didn't know that. So you can definitely lose that if you decide to. I don't know why the hell I did that for you. My hands are now inky. Um, I don't think I have any more interesting pins. I could do like a full Twisby, Twisby disassembly. I don't have any that I need to disassemble those, so it would be kind of pointless. i sure just that board. Also, if any of you guys play Overwatch, did you see the freaking hamster thing? Like, what in the hell is that? I'm, I'm kind of excited, though, to try that out. Um, what's in here? What's oh, crap? Wrecking Ball. That, that... <laughs> I forgot about that song to you just mentioned it now and I'm kind of angry at you because um, I was kind of glad I'd forgotten about that song. And then you had to come and you had to ruin it. You had to come in like a wrecking ball. I'm really concerned about the action on this. Like it just, I don't know. I feel like it should have washers. I know it doesn't look very heavily used so maybe he never broke it in. Um, The tip looks a little bit chipped. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. Also, talk about a fucking pointless swedge. Look at this. Look at this. That's that's not a swedge. That's a swedge. Come down to meet the tip. What 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 you don't need that on this. It does nothing. Let's see. I still have some ink reviews I need to get out to you guys. Um, it's so hard to keep up with what I've done because I've, oh, I've done so many of them. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen this, but here's like my ink swatches for all the reviews I've done or inks that I've tried. It's like a lot. It's a lot to keep up with, especially for me. Um, I'm sure I don't appear organized just because I'm not but it, it could probably be worse. Make a list. Um, I've tried. It's it's not something that you guys see. I don't want to check it twice. I'm not Santa. Um, it's not something you guys really see, but these videos do take forever to make. Um, generally an hour or two. 
of um, still trying to dial this action in an hour or two of, of preparation, everything for like maybe a, a five or six minute video, a pen review where, you know, I try to keep my video short, but like the, the Pelican was like 20 minutes or something like that. It took me probably four or five hours to, to get everything done for it. Um, and that's after I lost the audio that would have taken even longer. So that was a little, that was, that was frustrating is what that was. But yeah, the, um, they're very time consuming. So making a list and stuff like, um, so I took a little break, um, for various reasons that I might get into later, but I was pumping out like three to four videos a week. That's a lot of time. And I really don't have that much time as it is. So, you know, so that's a little difficult. I don't see how these people make such long live videos. I guess they actually have stuff to talk about. Go, gotta get that YouTube money. So YouTube has paid me exactly zero cents. Um, because I forget the exact rules. I think it's like you have to have like a thousand subs, which I'm not super far off. I have a lot more than I thought it would. For four people to even be watching this video right now is just astounding. Um, actually, I wonder if one of those is me. Hold on, let me close this out. I'm just curious. See if it drops off. So, yeah, you have to have like a thousand subs and um, 4,000 hours of watch time in a year, which is. 4,000 hours of watch time? Jesus. That's annoying. Um, I should leave that on for you guys. The vi is that what the video looks like? That's horrible. It's like 240p. Um, yeah. So you have to have like 4,000 hours of watch time a year, which I basically have, which confuses me as to why I need 1,000 subs if I meet the watch time requirements. It might be because my videos are longer form. Um, you guys really, really, really ate up those Atlanta pin videos, which those were very spur of the moment. Josh, who's in the chat now, um, a let's play chat. I don't even have time to play games. What the hell are you talking about? Um, Josh in the chat was actually uh, the Josh from the videos, which the pen show with me, which is really, really fun. Um, that was great, but those videos were very spur of the moment, and it's difficult to, to set aside, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to do stuff like that. Which those are a whole lot easier than doing even a four or five minute, you know, semi scripted video. Those are just rough. Let's see. Also, when is the next pin show? Um, it depends on which one you're talking about. The next one in Atlanta is going to be about the same time we went. Um, I believe the like Pittsburgh or something here. It's HD where you are. Awesome. It looks like absolute trash on my computer um it might be because i'm streaming over the same connection that could be part of it but you know yeah there's a there's a pinch going on right now um i'm not sure exactly where it is um sean from newton pens um i've seen him post on instagram about it if you guys don't follow me on instagram you totally should it's jake's take on an underscore in there somewhere but yeah um we should definitely go back to the atlanta show next year that was a blast i freaking loved that Shows a very handsome hand. Thank you. I, I, I do my best. I don't really. My hands are usually um, either cut or covered in ink. So, Also, if any of you are into knives, I don't get the appeal of an auto. I've had this one for like a week. And it's just, I don't know. It doesn't really do it for me. Um, this is a lot more my speed than this is. It's personal preference. I'll see if it grows on me. But yeah, I've got to pick up that new Twisby. I'm really freaking excited for that. Miami Pin Show is 13th to the 15th of July. Is that what you're referring to? Um, because 13th to the 15th, I'll actually be in Florida uh, of 13th, gosh, 13th to 15th of August. Um, so yeah, it is July. That's a shame. See, if it were in August, I could probably talk uh, my wife into going down there. That'd be kind of fun. Um, potentially expensive again. Also, speaking of expensive, so I um, I haven't used my Lamy 2000 in a while. I've been trying to you know use my Pelican and stuff for the review I just did. 
I really like that pen. I think the the pens that appeal to me the most, at least, are kind of in the uh, like one to two hundred dollar range. The Pelicans really are good, but uh, I don't know about that. Hold on, Josh. Chat's weird. Um, DC Super Show. Spider-Co Blade Steel. It is the uh, VG10 version. So, uh, not the ZDP. I really wish. But uh, VG10 is... I guess it's okay in a knife like this. Just because I don't plan on using this for doing any you know, really intense cutting or anything like that. But yeah, it's it's not the greatest. That's what I have also on my Cento Fonte 3. I use this knife as like a beater. Um, so it, it has taken a little damage. But it's not... Uh, super dull, yeah. So that's that's something. But yeah, this is just the VG10 version of the Spyderco Dragonfly. I really like it so far. I'm very impressed. A very thin blade stock on this. Um, let's see. Let me compare it to the the Cento Fonte is actually thinner blade stock. Um, this knife is really, really, really slicey. So if you do a lot of uh, soft core cutting, <laughs> definitely check that one out. I'm just going to go ahead and um, bring out, let me move some stuff so I have space. I'm just going to go ahead and bring out my, my little pen holder thing here. Uh, Josh, you'd mentioned earlier, oh gosh, that really messed up the exposure. You'd mentioned earlier doing redos. I think the only one I would really, 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 really like to redo would be this one on the Pilot Quattro because I was starting with some uh, new video stuff on that and the audio was just absolute trash it was horrible um i really regret that one remasters that's what i should call them <laughs> instead of re-reviews just remaster now in 4k i could do that in 4k now um i wonder something really sad if any of you are watching you know anything about videos for the longest time i had been using windows movie maker um i recently upgraded but it's you know it is what it is Yeah, um, so I'm really into custom scales, or the idea of them at least. I don't have any knives I could justify putting them on yet. Um, but when I got the Dragonfly ordered for such a good price, I was like, you know what, I'll get some custom scales put on that. I've seen them on Reddit, and I found out that if you don't have the, F, the uh, G10 version, they basically remake the whole handle, and it's because of this part here. I, I know that now, but yeah. I didn't have any transition effects because I tried to make it as seamless as possible for you guys. Um, I really didn't want to have anything too jarring. And also, I had never, never messed around video before the YouTube thing. And the sole reason I did it was so that I could talk to other people about knives and pens. More or less, that was it. Um, you know, I've gotten some other stuff recently, like, you know, watch. Love this thing. This review is coming. I did not forget about it. Um, I know I've had it for like seven months now and haven't reviewed it. I'm waiting to go to Florida because I want to see how it actually handles salt water. Um, I will cry if it breaks though, but you know. Also, if any of you guys are interested in this design, they do have the sea turtle number two. It does not come with the teal or the like burgundy um, watch face, only black, but it does come in bronze. It does come in uh, stainless steel and black coated stainless steel. So if you want a stealth watch to match your stealth knife, you can stealthily go buy one. Um, it's pretty good. I will I will say that. I do have a few qualms with it, but really good so far. Also, I really love this NATO band I've got with it um, from Clockwork Synergy. They make some really good stuff. One thing I will say, though, um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it now that I'm actually talking about it. So they released like a carbon fiber band a little while back, um, and I got it. And this is carbon fiber. What was on that watch band was not carbon fiber. It was horrible. Also, I've never had an allergic reaction to anything in my life, but that band made my wrist break out and itch horribly. It was it was a massive, massive pain. It was not fun at all. Um, let's see. Let's go and swap these knives for some pins. I'm going to just kind of push them all back, except for these two. These two are relatively expensive. Yeah, the carbon fiber, well, it was like a leatherette underside um, on the band. 
So the carbon fiber really didn't make me break up, but the underside did. So um, that's, I wore it, I think twice. And then I, I refuse to wear it anymore. Let's go and get some pens out while I'm here and people are actually watching. I'll talk about some stuff that's, you know, this week in ink was a really cool idea, but it's difficult to execute because there's not always a lot of news on things obscure as like fountain pens. So that's, you know, something. I actually have too many pens now, um, which is a weird thing to say, but it's just difficult to take time to write with them all. I'll try to clean this up real quick for you guys. That way it's not quite so cluttered. I'm super sorry about this thing right here. The camera angle on this is a lot wider than normal. So you're seeing the little arm I use to connect my phone. And also my mouse pad, because I'm literally right in front of my computer. I'll leave this down here just because he's new. Um, so the Conklin Duraflex, I really, really like this pen. It's really good. Apparently Conklin's had some issues with their nibs. So they have been running on Goulet. You can go and get a bunch of different Conklin models with that Omniflex nib. Pretty good nib. I don't... I don't use it a ton because it is a flex nib. You can use it for normal writing, but if any of you are interested in that, that's there as well. Also, if anybody happens to see any of the Pilot Quattros around anywhere, let me know. I got this one off eBay forever ago from Israel or something because I've never seen it before. Picked it up for like $13. Apparently, they're worth a decent bit more because all the ones I've seen since then have been between 80 and 100 which is strange to me. Considering this one was literally like still in its packaging. But I guess I just got a really good deal on it. But I still want these. They have a bunch of different colors. They have a pink and white. They have an all navy and all black. A bunch of different. I would love to get all the colors of that. Twisby. So I mentioned the Twisby Micarta earlier. I actually bid on one a while back. I think I bid like $110 for it or something. This is a Micarta. For those of you who don't know, it's this... um. It's like a canvas that's compressed. It's used a lot in knife scales. A lot, a lot. This is the Benchmade proper. Very, very nice little slip joint knife. But Micarta has a very special feel to it. It's sort of smooth, sort of textured, and it wears over time. So you can kind of see, see it age, which I find very, very appealing. So Twisby decided to make a pen out of this. There were a bunch of issues. Number one is that when you tried to fill the pen... From a bottle of ink, it would stain. Um, geez. It's stained right there at the tip of the grip section. So I found one that had that stain. I expected that. That's fine. But like $110 on it. It went up to $260. And I was like, that. I just can't do that for a steel nib pen, even if it is a super rare Twisby, which is probably my favorite pen company. I can't do it. So I didn't, I didn't jump on that one. I did see it, though, on eBay again the other day. Let me see if it's still here, if any of you guys are interested. I currently do not have nearly enough money to get it, but it is much cheaper than that 160 Super weird typing over all this. Okay, so it looks like it's sold already. That's interesting. Sorry about that. I was getting a call. Um... So yeah, it's gone already. Somebody snapped it up. I think it was like 150 or something. It's still at my price range what I'd be willing to pay for it, but you know. Also, never buy a scalped Twisby pen. That's ridiculous. Like there's like the uh, Twisby Diamond 580 all in purple and orange and all these other colors like for like hundreds of dollars on here. Don't do that. You know, if you ever pay a little, go ahead, but don't like... Twisby all rows here. Or pink. I'm sorry, it's the pink one. So it's the one I have. $100. No, don't do that. It's like a freaking $60 pen. It's really good, but no, don't do not do that. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. But that pen interests me a lot. And I did find another company that makes pens out of Micarta. The problem is 
that pen, the pen company is called Stylo Art. Saw them at the pen show. Josh probably remembers them because they had some very, very nice wooden pens. Um, so I went and looked, and they have Micarta as well. No footing to stand on. You might want to get a wheelchair. Um, they have Micarta as well, but they're like eight hundred dollars, and I was just like, no. So if anybody makes pens, yeah, it is those pens. If anybody that makes pens wants to make one out of Micarta, send it to me. I will give you money, potentially a lot of money, if it's the right kind of Micarta. They had some gorgeous, gorgeous stuff, though. They actually have their um, companies in Japan, which I didn't know, or I may have visited. I believe it is in Tokyo somewhere, which is about where we went for our honeymoon. So I kind of wish I'd gone and done that. Also, speaking of Japan and expensive things, apparently they get multiple freaking um, Pilot Vanishing Point limited editions based on different stores. We need to visit the Noodler guy. Nathan Tardiff, the guy who does Noodler's Ink. Um, do I have any over here? I don't think I do. Not, nope. Nope. Yeah, the Noodler's guy. Why would you want to go visit him, Josh? He's up north. He's not in Japan. Also, the Noodler's safety pin. What happened to that? Like, I know you can still get them, but there was a lot of hype built up around that, and now no one talks about it. I don't know. I considered getting them. They're like $55 or something like that, and I just don't know for something like that. Wait, no, the guy who's in Athens. Athens. You mean Aiken, South Carolina? Athens is in Georgia. Or Greece. If you're talking about the guy in Aiken, South Carolina, yes, we do need to go visit him. His name is Jonathan Brooks. He lives like an hour away from me. And I, I really want to go get one of his pens, but when I go and get it, I want it to be super, super special. And I just don't, I don't know. So um, if you watch my Atlanta pen videos, you know this already, but um, he did a Machier pen with a cat looking at the moon on it. It's just freaking gorgeous it is beautiful but i asked him about it at the show i was like hey how much would something like this cost and he either said it was 2200 or 2800 it was enough for me to go hell no nah, and just kind of walk away so i do want to get one of his pens i really like his arushi work but it costs you know basically what an arushi pen costs and that's a lot of freaking money they're gorgeous but you know um, so a lot of his resins are really cool. He actually invited me down to go and um, get a pen made there. So I'll probably take him up on that when I get some money. Kickstarter for a pen. You mean for me to make a Kickstarter just so people can pay me to build my pen? Or pay him, pay me to give him money to build my pen? That's a terrible idea. I don't think people are going to give me money to... No, that, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. Um, but what I wanted to do was actually make a, a video of the process, if he would let me, to kind of give you guys a look at, you know, what it's like, because I have no idea. Um, I really like a lot of DIY stuff. Pen making would be really, really cool. It's a lot less intensive and arduous than knife making is. So... That'd be impressive. Um, there's just a lot less moving parts in a pen. You can buy a lot of stuff kind of pre-built. Like you can buy pre-built clips, um, nibs, feeds, stuff like that. So that would be very interesting, but I don't have the tools and I definitely don't have the time. So getting to see someone make that, I think it would also kind of add to the um, emotional connection to it. Because a lot of these pens mean something to me. So this was my first decent fountain pen. I might have one before it, but it was just garbage and fell apart on me. This pen means a lot to me. This is my first Pilot, and also my first vintage pen. Um, this is actually from the 90s, I believe. There's a commercial you can go look at on YouTube. Just type in Pilot Quattro, and a bunch of these people are square, and I believe there's a square cat as well. It's very freaky. But it uses the Aerometric Converter or any of the new Pilot Converters as well. It's a really cool pen, though. 
this Twisby is actually my wife's Twisby. Um, I had an Eco in white forever ago that I sold to a friend at work. He loves it. I don't blame him. It's a fantastic pen. That's really good. This is the EOT actually in yellow green if you're wondering. Uh, the Moon Man, don't really have a special connection with this emotionally, but it is a really good pen. And the Duraflex, I really like limited edition stuff. Um, I'm not necessarily a collector. I don't just put this stuff up and never use it. Um, it may even be inked now, and obviously, yep, it is inked. It's currently inked with Bung Box, Ink of the Witch. I can tell because I got it on my finger, and there's a little purplish tint to it. But I, I like limited edition stuff. It's it's cool. It's kind of like you own a small piece of that company's history or an event. And this being the first pen that had the Omniflex nib and this little, you know, embossing on the barrel is just, it was cool. I liked it a lot. So I, I had to pick that up. Um, not that any of the other Dur um, Conklin pens right now with the nib would be bad, but that one's just kind of special to me. But yeah, so I get really emotionally attached to stuff. Um, pretty quickly depending for stuff like like this dragonfly like probably not i got it from some guy i don't even know you know this knife yes but for a very strange reason so this is the first knife that i saw and i was like i've got to have that and the reason is very dumb um there's an anime called durarara and there's a character called izaya and he actually uses this knife at one point during the show and I was like that's a really cool knife started doing my research found out what it was so that was really interesting so it always reminds me of that and my wife also likes that show so that's kind of cool so yeah if you don't know that and you watch anime pick one of these up really good except for the pen construction this I'm emotionally attached to because I they built it to my specifications more or less um, and I paid a lot for that but it's very, very good. The only thing I would change on it, I think, is I would probably get the blade in Damascus if I could go back. Or Dana Steel. Sorry. But that's like an extra 125 bucks on top of a $500 knife. No, thank you. But yeah, I just get emotionally attached to this random stuff. So giving me a reason to get emotionally attached is even better. Because that means I definitely will never sell it. So I try to somewhat avoid that when I can I generally give it and do it anyway I wonder how long this twizzy is inked up when I tried to unscrew it the cat fought me a decent bit it doesn't really have an ink in there though mm, still kind of writes I've, I've got to go through and clean out a lot of my pens they've just been sitting I've been uh, going through a little bit like a depression just kind of moping so i haven't really and nothing bad's happened it's just i don't know so i haven't really been paying much attention to my fountain pens which is part of the reason i'm doing the maintenance video so i can kind of maybe motivate myself to clean out some of these pens um because this one needs to be cleaned this one needs to be cleaned oh i really hope this one is not inked up oh holy freaking crap yes it is okay um and then you got all of a section Okay, so, without knowing it, I picked five pens that need to be cleaned, because all of them have gone without use for a while. The Safari I've used in the past, like, two weeks, I think, but, yeah. So, I need to clean all these out, which is, mm, eh, I'm kind of worried about this quattro. I'm wondering what happened to get ink all over the section like that. I might have squeezed on the, um, converter. Yes, all pens do need to be cleaned, but especially if it's a fountain pen. They're very fickle. They're very, very nice tools. I love using them, but you have to make, take care of them. So, you know. And that's something my wife does not do. So I've got some bad news, guys. Well, probably bad. Maybe good if you don't like me. Um, my phone is about to die. I don't have a charger in here with me. So I'm going to be cutting this off. Yeah, shaking pen syndrome. So I'm going to be cutting this off now. But thank you to everyone who tuned in. I think I had five of you at once. That was, that was really cool. Um, but maybe I'll do this more. That was kind of fun. Yep. Oh, no. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you in like five. Awesome in chat, and I'll talk with you. Thanks, guys. Bye.